I'm glad that you did this garden. All right guys, so I want to do a different video here. We're doing some vegetable gardening. The first year we tilled up a plot of land right next to the hoop house here. And you know, it takes a lot of fuel in the tractor. It takes a lot of time. It's a lot of beating up that land. And that's how we thought we had to do it because that's how everybody does it. They till up land, right? And we would go and get the tractor out and we'd go get the plow out. And I love plowing. I think it's just, I think it's fun. You know, using that tractor to plow dirt up is just something satisfying about it. And then we'd go get the disc and we'd disc it all up and make the soil real nice and fluffy. And, and it just would make everything really beautiful and easy to plant in. And then we'd get all the plants planted out in the soil and get our little rose made, get everything set out. And then a couple weeks later, what did we get every year, year after year? Weeds, tons and tons of weeds. And the other problem that we'd have is the plants would never grow that good. Some years they did, some years they didn't. But we do this year after year and we never had the best production. So if you guys have been watching me for a while, you've seen over the winter and actually started last summer over the winter i posted a few video updates of it i haven't posted much about the back to eden gardening lately but that's what we've gotten into this back to eden i'm a true believer i believe eventually over time this back to eden garden is going to do awesome things for us that being said i want to talk to you for a few minutes about the trials and tribulations of our back to eden gardening our successes our failures where we have went wrong what we've done right and how things look right now so that you guys understand fully it ain't perfect here we're just learning this stuff like you guys are and we're trying to share our experiences so that we don't make the same mistakes and we can learn something from each other and really move forward in having some awesome vegetable crops so you guys saw the videos last winter and if you haven't I'll put some links up here to them um, of us getting the back to Eden garden started and we laid down six inches of manure it was a manure slash wood chip actually not wood chip but uh, wood shavings combination and uh, I explained what that is before but what it is is there's a there's a barn there's a huge there's a dairy farm close by and there is uh, an area they have a huge gigantic barn where they keep all their mother cows and the cows walk around in that area and they poop and poop and poop and then they lay down a bed of shavings for them and then they poop 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 on that and then they lay down another bed of shavings and it's just back and forth over and over and over again all year long and after a year there's like two foot of this stuff built up and billions of worms and every year they have to clean all that out so they get a a uh, big uh, bulldozer and they just push all this stuff out and it turns into this huge mound that's like i don't know like 30 feet high 20 30 feet high and 50 feet wide and 60 70 feet long just huge mound of this stuff and because they're pushing it all off it all gets mixed up as it's going it's this perfectly mixed homogen johnny perfectly mixed homogenous mixture of beautiful garden soil right so anyway, I go over there with my dump truck and I bring it home. So we laid six inches of that stuff down on the garden. And then we did wood chips. And we've got a local arborist. He dumps wood chips all the time. I did six inches of wood chips over the whole thing because I was convinced that this is the way to go. And I want to tell you, I'm still convinced that the back to Eden method is the way to go. The no-till method is the way to go. However, I want to talk to you about that for a minute. And I want to show you some clips here. We planted... A bunch of stuff by seed in one little area of our garden and I saw it come up the first week or well, actually when the first week it was probably a week and a half to two weeks the little seeds sprouted and started coming up and I was so excited man I, I had some little sprouts coming up everything looked great I was excited I had little rows of sprouts you could barely see them though and another week went by and they came up a half a centimeter more and another week went by and they came up to a centimeter and I kept, man, this is so cool. I, and I think a month went by and they're just tiny little plants, tiny little rows. And it never dawned on me. And all of a sudden, one day I went out there after like a month and a half. We planted way back in April. And I went out there and right now we're in uh, July 13th, I think it is. 
And I went out there one day after like a month and a half and I looked at it and all of a sudden the doubt started creeping in. And I said, Mike, something's not right, buddy. You should have huge plants by now. And there weren't huge plants. There were tiny little one centimeter tall plants. You could barely see the rows. And it dawned on me and I realized what I did wrong. And I knew what I did wrong. I knew it was the wrong thing to do and I did it anyway. I planted right in the wood chips. And I, when it dawned on me, when I realized, Mike, you screwed up, buddy. You planted right in the wood chips. Paul told you not to do that and you did it anyway. Why did you do that? And it screwed the whole thing up. All of the plants that are planted in the ground, in the orchard part of it, the fruit trees, the strawberries, the blueberries, uh, you know, all of those things that we planted in the ground, the berry plants that are going to be solid and stay there for good, and then piled up the manure and piled up the wood chips over them, all of those plants are doing fantastic. So I'm sitting out there, and I'm looking around, and I'm thinking, Mike, it's the last week of May. And all of a sudden, it dawned on me. I said, Mike, you still got time, buddy. You got to get something planted. Even if you don't get a huge crop, you got to get something planted and prove this to yourself. I started looking around. You got 10 acres, Mike. You got to have a plot somewhere where the deer can't get to that you can till up and go back to your old methods and figure this thing out and try something. And I'm looking around, I'm racking my brain, and I'm thinking, what can I do? And all of a sudden, it dawned on me, Mike. You've got a gigantic chicken coop that these chickens have been pooping in and eating all the weeds and grass and vegetation down all flipping year long and it's probably the perfect soil for gardening in. All right, so as you can see, these were tiny little strawberry plants, almost not worth anything. <laughs> and. Uh, we planted them all in these wood chips, but we dug down pretty good, pretty deep, and got the roots down in the soil. And they are doing really well for their first year. They're putting on tons of strawberries. You guys have seen my zucchini over there. <laughs> and we know why that one's so nice. The fruit trees are doing really, really well, but they're planted way down in the soil. I, I dug down a foot, put them in the soil, the actual dirt, and then covered them back over, and they're doing great. And then you can see the raspberries. The raspberries are doing really well as, as well. And we planted these, like everything else here in this orchard area, we planted these down in the wood chip, or down in the soil, and then piled the wood chips up around them. Some of these went a little deeper, so they're, they're struggling to come up, but they're coming up, and eventually here, they're gonna be just tons of raspberries. You can hardly do anything to kill these things. They just start coming like crazy once they get established. But you can see this beautiful growth. It's down in the soil, covered by wood chips. We never need to water any of this stuff. It is just growing fantastic. And eventually, this, this row will be up over our heads. And then we've got the blueberries. The blueberries are just, they're doing better than I thought they were gonna do. I'm really impressed with the blueberries. We've already gotten some forming. I chopped all these guys down, these, this row of big, uh, the, these guys were like four foot tall, some of them. And I hacked them down because the deer were just munching the heck out of them before we got the fencing up and they actually came right back. We're getting some blueberries and these plants, I mean, this is all just new growth, just doing fantastic. These blueberries, I'm really impressed with. I'm really happy with how these wood chips are working in this orchard area. And now I know I showed you that clip of the garden earlier after I think we had planted that maybe a month and a half, two months earlier than the video you saw. Um, I wanna show you a little update of the things we planted then and how they're doing now and the differences. These guys, I'm, they started off slow and we thought this isn't gonna work. These guys were planted in wood chips. I think we dug down just a few inches. They were planted literally right in the wood chips. And these are, uh, we've got some cauliflower right here and Brussels sprouts over here and we dug some of them up and transplanted some that's why there's little gaps here but they started off small like the seeds but once they got established they took off and I'm amazed at that because them roots had to go down darn near nine inches to a foot to get to good soil so I'm not sure why that turned out the way it is I didn't put any urine on these plants no fertilizer nothing they just figured it out on their own and they've got just huge beautiful gorgeous leaves so the wood chip method definitely works the back to Eden method definitely works here's a failure <laughs> we planted these zucchinis 
whole row of them, or not zucchinis, I'm sorry, pickles and cucumbers all the way down. You can see there's a couple of them that made it. A couple of them. But look, these things were planted in April, the beginning of April. And, I mean, geez, air the size of my hand with that plant. This thing should be, you know, almost as big as our zucchini plant by now. These are all potatoes. And they came out fantastic, but once again, I walked along here in rows with a deep spade and went all the way down to the soil. I took the spade, shoved my foot on it, right down, put that spade right down into the wood chips at an angle and all the way down to the soil. And then I just pushed the spade forward to create a little hole. And my daughter walked behind me and just dropped a potato in each hole. And then I let the soil just fall back on itself or the wood chips fall back on themselves and cover up and it took a while it took a few weeks maybe three weeks and then finally we started seeing a couple little shoots and the potatoes just took off and I'm really excited to see how these guys are going to do these are beans these are bush beans or string beans something like that my wife makes all these little dilly beans every year in cans cans them and uh, that's what these guys are but uh, they started really 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 slow as seeds but once them roots got down into the manure they started taking off i still don't think that they're anywhere near as good as they should be but uh you know they are what they are i think once the soil breaks down more and there's more nitrogen available i think we'll have nicer plants now here's our rows of onions planted straight in wood chips not amounting to much but the roots are fine they don't go very deep once again, no nitrogen. There was a row of beets right here, all the way down. Not much came up at all. The, the beets came up and then pretty much died back immediately. One of them lasted. Then we've got a whole row of carrots and they started out so tiny, almost couldn't even see them. And it took weeks and weeks and weeks for them to do anything. And then all of a sudden, their roots must have found some manure or something but once again that stuff's not broken down all the way yet so there's just not enough nitrogen but we're gonna leave them in and see what they do but once again these guys were planted in straight wood chips let's see if we can we're starting to get some carrots we planted some uh spinach and this guy's going to seed here starting to flower but uh we planted some spinach and i've actually been harvesting this spinach it took a while but it started coming up. It's in wood chips, probably not the most nutritious. We've got a couple uh, cabbages here that actually made it. I had a whole row of them. You can see one little guy right here. Not amounting to anything, straight in wood chips. We picked a ton of peas off of those guys, but they're just not the best. But now, I want to show you guys something. Here is our entire vegetable garden. I had, uh, I had rows of beets, we've got carrots, they're, they're finally doing something, but the things that are doing something here are the things that are actually, the roots are finding some manure and maybe getting down into the soil better, but not the biggest, not the greenest, you know, not doing the best, but here we are July 13th and some of them are starting to make it a little bit and do okay, but nothing that you'd want to write home to mom about, <laughs> but uh when I was standing out here and I was depressed a month ago, a month and a half ago, thinking, Mike, you screwed it all up. You planted right in the wood chips. What can you do to fix it? I looked over suddenly and I thought, I can do something to fix this. And that's where the chicken coop idea came in. And check this out. We replanted and we are just super excited about the results. There's the chickens back in there and there's the garden. And let's get in there now and talk about what we've done. All right, for those of you that ever wanted to see Johnny, here he is. That's about the meanest rooster you ever saw in your life. But he sure is a good guard rooster, and he watches over all these nice little hens really well. Don't you, Johnny? You mean little <laughs> sucker. All right. Look at this, guys. What we did here was I had my... Thank you, Johnny. I had my uh, my mother-in-law's boyfriend came over with his rototiller, and yes, I tilled again. I decided I'm gonna till one more time, and we tilled this whole area. It's about 23 foot by, shoot, I don't know, it's probably another 30 some foot long. We tilled the area about, I don't know, nine inches deep, and pulled all the big rocks out. We had a couple big rocks, in fact, 
that was one of the rocks that we pulled out of there. We pulled all the big rocks out, and I brought a whole bunch of that manure. I brought a whole bunch of that manure in, and we dumped it and spread it out about three inches thick over this whole area, and then tilled all of that in. So it was just fluffy, beautiful soil. I don't care about all these little rocks. They don't bother me. And then we ended up planting seed again right into the ground here. And uh, I came out, I've still got a few weeds you can see, but because of all that manure, it actually covered the ground a little bit. And we didn't get as many weeds as we're normally accustomed to. And so I've been coming out with the rake and just kind of raking over the surface so I don't have a whole lot of weeds to deal with. It's actually really nice, but I'm just really impressed with this. And it, it does go to show you guys that there's no substitute for planting in real soil. There's no substitute for planting in dirt. And there it is, there's the row of carrots. We've got tons of beets coming up right here. Tons of beets. We actually replanted, the chickens got in at one point and devastated the back half there. You can see it's a little sparse. <laughs> but uh, we ended up replanting some beets in the back there, but all this stuff was doing good. Look at the romaine lettuce, it's just beautiful. Growing awesome and huge. <laughs> One of my favorite greens, actually my favorite green, spinach, is just growing beautiful and green. I'm going to pick a bunch today and eat it. Um, we've got a row of cabbages right down here, and we'll see how they do. I think they do better in cooler weather, but uh, we'll find out. A couple tomatoes that we had planted out in the wood chips, and we've transplanted them, and they've you know, they, they were doing nothing, and they've grown to 10 times their original size since we planted them right in soil. Got a few tomatoes down in there. And then we actually transplanted. These guys are still trying to pick up because we transplanted them, but these are those same, um, well, there's a cauliflower down there that got beat up by the chickens, and then Brussels sprouts here. The same ones as you saw before, they're not as big because we transplanted them, and then the chickens got in here and, and ate them all down, but they're coming back. Got some pepper plants, still small, but you know, we're just so thankful that, uh, that God put this idea in my head, or somehow it, flashed into my brain <laughs> and we started this because we're actually going to have produce this year and and this is just a great year and from here on now these are all just cucumbers and look at these cucumbers compared to the others and they were planted probably a month and a half two months after the last seeds that i showed you in the wood chip bed look at how beautiful and huge they are i mean they're just doing outstanding i'm really really happy with all this stuff We've got our beans, and, and that's another thing I should say. We've got our peas here doing great. Remember, guys, this stuff was planted here about two months almost. It was all planted about two months after this stuff. And so there's no substitute for planting in mineral, mineral rich soil, you know, nutrient rich soil. I mean, this is just, you cannot beat this. And so, our goal now is not to plant in the wood chips. We're gonna be planting in the soil, but we're gonna continue with the back to Eden method. And this is just a couple weeks later, guys. I mean, it is just growing like crazy. Very exciting. Tons of produce. In fact, check out all the produce that we're getting from this garden right now. All right, guys, look at the produce abundance from this garden so far. We've got green beans. We've got sweet peas, and these sweet peas are absolutely fantastic. We have got lettuce, and this is really, really good lettuce. We've got cauliflower, and this cauliflower is interesting. It was just regular old cauliflower we planted, but you can see the difference between store-bought and this stuff planted in your own organic garden. It's almost a purplish color down there in the stems, and then some yellowing on top, but this stuff is really good, really healthy, way better than store-bought. We've got spinach, time to fill up the spinach box. We've got our own homegrown eggs. Whoops, somebody needs to refill the egg tray. And we've even got zucchini, and you guys have seen this one. Look at the size of these, man. If you haven't seen this video yet in the past, then just check out this link right here in this corner, and this link right here in this corner, and you'll see how we arrived at this size zucchini versus these little guys over here, although the little guys are picking up. Let's dive into this little food forest right here. 
and see what kind of abundance we have got. Look at the size of those zucchini. And there's so many of them. They're popping out all over the place. Look at that. And more flowers coming in. Allie, what is your favorite part about this garden? My big zucchini. Is it? Yes. You like that zucchini, huh? Awesome. Check that thing out. I am just so impressed with the rate of growth of all of these vegetables from coming from a guy with landscape plants growing rhododendrons. These things just grow so fast. I come home from work and come out after a 14 hour day and look at these things and it seems like they've doubled in size every other day. Look at the size of all of these guys right here. These are all of the pickling cucumbers and they're just growing out of control. We had three rows here. In fact, this center row we planted a couple weeks after we planted the side rows and it's already picked up in size and just uh it's matching the side rows that we've got here but we've already got some little pickles let's see let's see if we can find any oh there's a little tiny pickle starting to form yep. you see it right there oh yeah we're gonna be eating pickles alley mm -hmm. mm -hmm. these tomatoes are taking off like crazy They're they are they are out of control let's see We've got some tomatoes down in there. Boom, still green, lots of flowers though. Mm. And uh, these tomatoes are gonna be coming on pretty soon here. All the cabbage hasn't started forming cabbage heads yet. Tons of beautiful leaf growth, but I'm just really impressed at how well this garden's doing. My favorite over here, spinach, starting to bolt. So I'm gonna have to get all the spinach I can. And uh, I'm thinking about planting another row, just pulling these guys up, feeding them to the chickens, and planting another row. You like that stuff, Al's? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And then Mom's <coughs> romaine. There's Johnny. She picked some a few days ago. Yeah, she did. Then we've got some, uh, some beets here, and these guys are getting really big. <laughs> This is, this is for mom. She loves pickled beets. Every year she cans a ton of them. We usually buy the beets from local farms, but this year we're going to try and get all of our own beets going here. Carrots are doing okay. Mm -hmm. Everything's just growing like crazy. What do you think, kid? Everything is out of control. <laughs> all right. What's up, buddy? All right, so it's been another week, and every time I come out here, this garden is just looking more and more fantastic. And guys, this, and guys, this is the fun part about gardening, right? You get to eat what you grow. So I just bring a knife out here, been doing this anyway, and some of these are actually starting to go to flowers, so I'm gonna cut those flowers out and encourage, we'll just throw them right back out here somewhere, and we'll encourage new spinach growth so that I can continue, there's a weed there, so I can continue to eat this stuff. So I just pulled it up, grab a whole handful of this stuff, just chop it right off at the stems. And we've got this little basket that we got, originally bought spinach in, and I've just been using that. And this stuff just keeps coming back. I took some uh, I took some of it down here before and it's already got some nice big leafy green leaves there and uh, These guys are just uh, they just keep coming back all summer I I'm guessing and do great occasionally. Yeah, you find a little bug or two on there I don't even like washing this stuff if I see anything, you know, that's kind of glaring at me then I'll rinse it off, but I uh, I Just love this spinach man it is just such good, rich, healthy stuff to eat. And when you get it right fresh from your garden, you, could, you know, it couldn't be any healthier. recommend the back to eat method or at least the no-till method now I know I showed you we tilled that area this first year uh, but we also layered it like I said with a lot of uh, that that manure material with the wood chips in it and it's held a ton of moisture in and really allowed those plants to get a good start and out in the out in the uh, area where we've got all the berries and the trees they're just doing fantastic with all those wood chips piled up around them. It's still holding tons of moisture in them. 
I've only watered one time out there, just did a little spot watering on each plant. I'm not even sure they needed it. I just did it for posture, you know, just for good measure more than anything. But uh, it's just, I, I'm convinced it's absolutely the way to go. And the weeds have just cut down enormously. So a lot of fun. I hope this inspired you guys to go start your own garden and get to growing stuff and eating your own produce. So have an awesome week and I'll see you guys in the next video.